Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Allergy Pals Monthly. So, my name is Julia, and I'm so excited to welcome you guys to this month's session. If you weren't here last time, here's how it works. We're going to talk about a certain topic and have some fun polls, interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. This month theme is one, it has to be one of my favorites. It's traveling with food allergies. So let's just go over, for those of you who maybe haven't been here before, how to participate. So you can participate in a couple of ways. So you can participate with the question box, which you will see on your GoToMeeting panel. You can write questions, you can answer questions that I give you using the question box. All you have to do is type it in and then press and press enter. You can also participate by raising your hand. So raising your hand is an option that's given on your GoToMeeting panel. So once you raise your hand, we, myself, can unmute you and then you can actually speak with your microphone. That way everybody can hear your question or whatever you want to share to us. Okay, so start off with the poll question. Are you planning on traveling for spring break? It doesn't even need to be for spring break. It could be any time this spring. Select one of the following. Yes, no, or not sure yet. So a bunch of you are saying not sure yet. Totally fine because spring break's still a little while away. A few of you said no, which is cool. I love hanging out at home. And some of you are also saying yes, so great. What I will say, if you guys wanna share, if you are going somewhere and you wanna share where you're going in the question box, write it in the question box below. Where are you going? Are you going somewhere tropical? Are you going somewhere in the country? Are you just going up north? Where are you going? So I wanna introduce myself, guys. So I'm Julia, so I have a couple of allergies. So I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. My hobbies are swimming, reading, and watching sports. My favorite trip has to be, um, my family and I a few years ago went to Puta Cana together as a family, so that's in the Dominican, and that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And oh, actually, ooh, I don't know anymore because I also love Costa Rica. My family and I went to Costa Rica. So actually, the Costa Rica one's my favorite trip. Um, and my dream destination, I've always wanted to go to either Korea or Japan, both, if I'd be able to, um, just because it's somewhere so different and it's across the world. So I think that would be really cool. So I see James shared he's going to the Dominican. Great, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be so warm, you're gonna come back with a nice tan. And MJ said somewhere, cool. Okay, poll question. So what's your dream destination? Select one of the following guys, Europe, USA, Asia, South America, or other. I already shared mine, mine's in Asia. Okay, so. Half of you guys put USA, it's right split down the middle, and then the other half put other. What's other? Share, share with me in the question box below what country you wanna travel to. What's your dream destination? Oh, so Mackenzie said Paris. Ooh, so nice. I've never been to Paris. I think that'd be very beautiful though. MJ shares Brazil, oh, Brazil. That sounds like, that sounds just so, so cool. I think that would be awesome. And Breth, uh, Brethny shared the Amazon. That is so unique, I love that. Great, great guys, I love hearing these. Okay, so the question I have for you guys now, raise your hand if you think it can be difficult to travel with food allergies. Okay, so a bunch of you guys are raising your hand. So that's the point of today. So today we're gonna learn how to manage our food allergies when we're away from home. Okay, 
So traveling with food allergies. So my question to you guys is, why do you think it'll be difficult to travel with food allergies? By raising your hand if you want to speak or answer the question, uh, answer the question in the question box below. Answer why do you think it's difficult to travel with food allergies? Okay, so Luke has his hand up. Luke, did you want to share? How about you, MJ? Did you want to share? I say that the um, hard part about traveling with having allergies is because when because they might give you some food on the plane because they might be like selling bags of peanuts or stuff like that. So it'll be hard because someone right next to you might be eating those peanuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a concern. Thank you for sharing that. Well, I, we're actually just give you one second and we're going to actually address that. Okay. Um, and Luke, you wanted to share something. Um, the same as Jay. Yeah, the same. Okay. Thank you boys for sharing. Okay. So these are some things that I think are going to be difficult number make it difficult number one you're in a new place you're not in the same place that you always are you aren't at home you aren't at school you're not just out of a restaurant you're in a whole new atmosphere whether that be on an airplane or a different country or on a train or on a bus you're in a new atmosphere that you're not familiar with another thing is new restaurants I think Canada has some of the best, um, I think we're some of the, one of the best countries for food allergies. I think we're very understanding and a lot of people are now aware of what food allergies are, especially in restaurants. When you go to a new country though, sometimes their food laws are different or they don't understand allergies quite the same way um, or they use different ingredients in their cooking. And that can make a very um, anxious experience in a restaurant. Oopsie. So there's also some new food. Different countries have different delicacies. They've got different things for you to eat. It's not all gonna be burgers and fries. And this one I think is one of the most important things different languages. It is so, so, so tough to communicate when you can't speak the same language. If you're speaking English and somebody else is speaking Spanish, how are you gonna communicate your allergies to them? My tip for you guys, when you're going to a new country, when you're going to a new atmosphere, it can even be an atmosphere where they're speaking the same language, it's important to be prepared. So traveling true or false, the emergency number is 911 in every country. So write in the question box below if you think that's true or false. Okay, so a bunch of you guys are saying true and a bunch of you guys are saying false like right right, right in between. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, next question, ready? You should always bring more auto injectors than you normally would. So I'll give you guys a second, think about that one, and then write true or false. Okay, this one's very down the middle. Oh, a Everyone's saying true, perfect, okay. And last one, every country has the same common allergens. So I'll give you guys a second. And that one's also very down the middle. Okay, so let's find out what it actually is. So number one, the emergency number in 911 in every country, that's false. It can be different across the world. So some countries can be uh, 902, some countries can be triple zero, some countries could be 999. So when you guys go away, it's important to look up before you leave the emergency number of the country you're traveling to. Number two, 
you should always bring more auto injectors with you than you normally would. That one is true. So in case you use one, it may be difficult to get new ones when away from home especially if you're in third world countries like the Dominican or Cuba, where, um, med where it might not be as easy to get that kind of stuff, it's important that you come prepared with extra ones, just in case. And number three, every country has the same common allergens. That's false. They can be different across the world. And I'll show you guys some examples. So, little game for you guys. I want you to guess how many common allergens are in each of the countries. So which country, Britain, Canada, or USA, has eight common allergens, which country has 10 common allergens, and which country has 14 common allergens? Write it, your answer in the question box below. Okay, so let's take a look. Ready? So the USA has eight common allergens. Canada has 10 common allergens. And Great Britain has 14 common allergens. Did you get it right? So the, I wanna talk about guys being prepared for going on vacation. Well, before I go on vacation, so I'm, I'm leaving to go to Cuba in three, about three weeks. And I've already started preparing because I want to make sure I leave without forgetting anything. So these are some of my top travel trips, tips, trips. <laughs> so number one, bring safe food from home. My carry on. So the thing that I bring on the plane is used for food. I bring protein bars, cereal, um, like those mini soups that you just add water in. I bring some of that craft dinner. I oh, I bring snacks, like I'll bring chocolate, I'll bring candy, I'll bring chips. Just um, just in case. That in case there are no options for me where, where I'm going, if um, I can't eat something and someone else is eating something and I'm hungry, I can grab that protein bar or I can grab that bag of chips and just munch on that. I think it's also important when you're to bring safe food from home for the airplane because it's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to eat on the airplane. So I I don't like eating on airplanes like eating airplane food. I bring my own food that I know is safe. That way I feel, that way it's a little bit more comforting. So number 2, bring extra auto injectors. So not when you're leaving, when you're going away, not the time to carry around with one auto injector because if you need to use it, you don't have any more. So it's important to bring a couple or a few whenever you're, whenever you're leaving or going somewhere. I always travel with more than one. Uh, number three, wear your medical ID. So a lot of the medical IDs now um, actually come with like a number on the inside that you're able to look up. And technology is so cool. So when that's looked up, you're able to see your history of your allergens and stuff like that. That way, if something were to happen, um, paramedics or uh, paramedics or doctor is able to get your history very quickly. Number four, and this is so important, and I think um, it's so useful, especially when you go to countries where they don't speak English, have your allergies translated. So what I bring, um, in the last couple of years, I've only been to Spanish-speaking countries, so I got my allergist, he was Spanish, coincidentally, to write up a list, like a letter, to give my waiters, to give the chef, um, and to just kind of carry it around saying how um, important it is that I, I don't come in contact with my allergens. And it was so helpful. Every time I gave it in to one of the, one of the waiters or a chef, they really appreciated me actually having something in their own language that they were able to see, use, and reference. 
I actually like I I ended up uh, photocopying it and bringing like 20 with me because a lot of them actually also asked to keep it because they thought it was so interesting to have. And something else that I would suggest doing research local restaurants and cuisine. So see what the kind of cuisine they eat. Are they a meat country? Are they a fish country? Do they love their dairy, their cheese? See what type of things you can eat. Maybe there are some places that can be safe for you. So the more that you guys prepare in advance, the less there is to think about when you're actually on your trip. And if you use all of these tips, I promise you, it's gonna, you're gonna feel, um, you're gonna feel good when you're leaving, that you're so prepared. You're like ready to take on the world. Okay, poll question. So what safe food do you bring with you when you're traveling? So select one of the following, sandwiches, granola bars, candy, chips, or other. And if this were me, I would be clicking all of them. <laughs> okay, so let's see some of these. So a bunch of you guys see sandwiches, so delicious, especially for when you're going on road, long, long road trips. And then this seems pretty even, granola bars, candy, chips, and other. Love it. Great job, guys. Remember, there's no harm in bringing in your own food. No harm, because you'll eat it. Even if there is options for you, you have snacks when you get back to your hotel room. Okay, so what I want to do now, guys, is practice a tough situation. So what would you tell the flight attendant? So the flight attendant says, here's your meal. There's no ingredient list, but it should be okay for you. How would you respond? Write your answer in the question box below or raise your hand if you wanna be unmuted. Okay, MJ, what do you think? Um, I would say, sorry, I can't eat that uh, unless I know what is in it. Absolutely, I think, that's, I think that's a very straightforward and good answer. If there's no ingredient list, I can't take the chance. That's great, thank you. So, Brefni, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, says, I think I will eat my own food. Great, don't eat it, like just don't eat it. Eat your own food that you brought in your own bag. James also says, no thank you, I brought my own food, and Erica says no. Great answers, guys. You want to let them know that you can't eat it and you're not going to take the chance. Poll question. What attraction would you like mo to most visit? So select one of the following. Disney World, Niagara Falls, the Eiffel Tower, the Caribbean beaches, or other. So I've been to Disney World and Niagara Falls and the Caribbean beaches. So I would have to say on that list is the Eiffel Tower or I could even, yeah, I would have to say the Eiffel Tower from the list. Oh, a bunch of you guys in Disney World, you gotta go. It's so fun. Um, and nobody said Niagara Falls. I guess it's because we live in Canada. Nah, not, uh, and then, a bunch of you guys also said the Eiffel Tower and Caribbean beaches. Love it. Okay, so now is one of my favorite parts. It's allergy wheel of fortune. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I will slowly reveal letters of a special phrase. You're going to type your guesses in the question box. The first one to guess the correct phrase wins. Are you ready? So that's what it looks like. And this is the clue, the top tip for airplane travel, okay? So I'm gonna start slowly revealing them and the first person who gets it wins. Ready? I'm gonna reveal another letter. Uh, 
I'm going to reveal another letter. Anybody got it yet? It's a tough one. Almost done. Anybody get it yet? Make sure you write your answer in the question box if you know what it is. Oh, and it looks like we got a winner. Charlene. Aww. Let's see if anybody else gets it. And MJ also answered it. Good job. Oh, Mackenzie also answered it. That's awesome. And great job. And ready, guys, I'm going to reveal it. Be prepared. Don't wing it. So congratulations, Mackenzie, Charlene, MJ, Anne, and Mackenzie for getting that first. What this saying means, guys, make sure you be prepared. Don't just do nothing and then expect it. Just don't, just don't wing it make those make those things in advance so the next thing i want to talk about guys is flying with food allergies and i know a couple of you have already expressed um uh how that can be a little bit intimidating when you're traveling so i want to really make sure we go through it so these are the top tips i have for flying with food allergies so number one you're informing the airline in advance so call the airline two, three, five, even a week before you fly out. Let them know what flight you're gonna be on and what your allergies are. Then you're able to kind of be in a conversation with them about what steps that you guys should take in order to make it safe for you. I love doing it in advance, um, like five days in advance, because you're, they're able to give you options. Um, whereas in the moment, then you might not have a, as many options. So number two, pre-board to wipe down the tray table seat. So bring, um, what I like to bring is like baby wipes or like the, um, like just some disinfectant and just like really wipe down the area because you don't know with somebody that was sitting there yesterday or the day before, you don't know what they were eating and whether or not it was cleaned effectively. Number three, and I can't stress this enough, don't eat airline food. There's usually no ingredients um, and you don't know what's in it. Bring your own snacks. And number four, keep your auto injectors in your carry on bag. Make sure your auto injectors are with you and not in your luggage, just in case. So here are some spring break travel and camp tips. Are you, my question for you guys, raise your hands. Are you going on a trip during spring break? So before spring break, these are some of the, um, these are some of the things I would recommend you guys do. Look into the food situation ahead of time. What kind of food are you gonna be eating? Are you going to a camp? Is it a sleepaway camp? Are you guys gonna be eating during the day? What kind of meals are they gonna be eating? Are they safe for you? You need to make sure you contact them beforehand and just really go through that. You also wanna make sure that you're communicating your allergies to resorts. If you're going to a resort, especially if it's in a place where you um, can't speak the language, that's the opportunity where the translating allergy card comes in handy. So what I'm doing before I leave for my resort, I actually think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna call the resort that I'm going to and just uh, make sure that they know about my allergies. That way when I come, when I arrive, it's not that much of a shock to them. And number three, 
have your auto injectors with you and communicate where you keep it. So for day camps and allergies, these are some of the tips that I have for those. So number one, research menus ahead of time. So just like you are at home, make sure you're researching ahead when you're going to like a restaurant or you're going to a friend's house for a party. Research menus ahead of time. What kind of stuff is being served? Number two, make sure your directors and counselors are aware. It's so important that the people around you know about your allergies. Number three, don't trade or share food with other campers. My rule is if it doesn't have ingredients on it, I don't eat it. And number four, have a plan for your epinephrine. So where will it be during activities? For example, swimming. Maybe you can keep it with your counselor if your counselor is nearby and out of water. Maybe you want to put it in a bag and put it on the side of where you guys are swimming. That way it's nice and close to you, but not in the water, obviously. Okay, so it's question time. So I have a couple of rules. No parent questions, just kids. Either type your question or raise your hand to be unmuted over the phone. Keep it short and sweet. No medical advice. And one question each, two if there's time. Ready? Okay, Luke, I see your hands up. Do you wanna, in, did you wanna start us off with your question? Okay, Sean, let's try MJ. MJ, did you wanna start us off? When the person next to you is eating something you're allergic to, what would you do? Do you mean like on the plane? Yeah. Okay. So um, before I go on a plane, I always talk to the stewardess. So I'll always call the plane in advance, like three or four days in advance, just to let them know about my allergies. And then when I get to the airport and I'm about to board, I always have a conversation with the stewardess. And usually we create a plan. So what we, what we usually do, um, and they'll give this off. I've never been on a plane where they've never given this option to me when I've told them about my allergies is them creating, they call it a buffer zone, which means the three rows ahead of you and the three rows behind you and the three rows next to you, above and behind, aren't allowed to have your allergens. And then if those people, um, I've never had an issue, but if anybody really objected to that, they'll, they'd move their seat. So that way you kind of have like an area where you can, where nobody is ingesting your allergen. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I would try that out next time you travel. It's really helpful. It's, it really is. Thank you for the question. So I have a question that was sent to me a little bit earlier. So the question I have, how do I best prepare for an all-inclusive vacation? So in case you guys don't know what an all-inclusive vacation is, it's where all of your meals are provided for you. So I would definitely, number one, research the resort ahead of time. So check out, uh, even call the resort, ask them what kind of food they serve, um, what kind of oil they use in their cooking, um, what, do they use many grills, go with questions, and then just ask about it. See if they can make separate meals for you instead of using buffets, and then still bring some extra snacks. So for me, um, Last year I went to Mexico and they were so common. The resort I stayed at, oh my God, where did I stay at? Oh, the Rio. I stayed at the Rio and they were so accommodating with my allergies. They made me my own separate meal every single night. I had my, like my own little sh private chef who would look for me at night and it was, it was amazing. And he made me such great meals. And then I still made sure that I brought my own extra snacks and stuff just in case I got hungry after dinner or I was hungry in the morning before breakfast. That way I still had options for myself. And then absolutely bring some extra auto injectors. So James asked, what plane company is the safest to travel on? I wouldn't say that there is a safest uh, plane company to travel with. I would just, um, cause they're all very great. I would definitely just after you book your trip or even before you book your trip and you don't know um, what plane company to go with, give the company a call and ask them what they do. 
Like what kind, what can they do to accommodate you? So another question that I have, ooh, tips for a shared kitchen. So for example, if you're sharing a kitchen with people you don't know in Airbnb. So I would number one, definitely tell people about your allergies. So let the people know around you what you're allergic to. And then ask them to help keeping pots, plant, pans, and dishes clean. That way, if they use a pot or a pan, they wash it right away and they do a very thorough scrubbing. And number three, I would bring your own sponges. I wouldn't use anything anybody else has touched just in case um, they, had, they ingested something that you're allergic to. Thank you for the question. So I'll answer one more. So the question here I have is, oh, I actually have somebody raising their hand. MJ, did you have a question? So let's just say something random here. Um, what if someone stole all of our food and we had to eat something from someone else? What would we do? Well, there's grocery stores and stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't worry about that, right? There's always, there's always gonna be an option. You have your own food, like there's grocery stores, like there's options to get more food. Thanks for the question. So Charlene, are you able to, am I able to hear you? What's your question? Um, so like, what if you're on a plane and like the people that are serving you food on the plane don't speak English? That's a that's a really good question. Oh, thank you for asking that. Um, I that's when I think preparation in advance comes into play. I guess especially if you're traveling to somewhere in Europe or Asia, there is a huge possibility that somebody may not be able to speak English. Um, but it's definitely something that you ask in advance. Call the airline. Um, get somebody who speaks English in advance and make a plan for you. Most do speak English, especially when they're coming to pick you up from Toronto, but just in case, or sorry, not Toronto, but like Canada, an English speaking country, but just in case. That was a great question. Thank you. Okay, guys, so that is all the questions we have time for. Thank you so, so, so much for asking them. They were great. So here's some for more. If you want more information, I want you for about traveling with food allergies, visit foodallergycanada.ca. We have a lot of trips on managing food allergies and traveling. So next month's session, guys, write it on your calendars. Um, the date's gonna be on March 25th. It's from seven to 8 p.m. And the topic is going to be anxiety and food allergies. You can register at foodallergycanada.ca slash events. You can also watch um, Allergy Pals monthly webinars at foodallergycanada.ca slash webinars. Um, somebody also asked a question earlier if they're able to look at this session at a later date. You are. So I would definitely go to foodallergycanada.ca slash webinars and you'll be able to watch the session again. Um, it might not be available for a little bit, but you'll be able to do it eventually. So I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I really hope you can make it for next time. So I want to give a special thanks for the, to the University of Alberta for the original online mentorship program and TD Securities for their financial support. Lastly, please take a second to fill in our survey afterwards. We really appreciate the feedback. Until next time, happy travels!